the guest comfortable. So that the station area is within the triform area. From the ride station, the guests load in. It goes to the launch position. It's about five seconds till it reaches the first hill. During the first hill, the guests will experience a lot of air time, which is going to be really important. As it goes through these speed curves, it's going to be low-lying, and the guests will experience more of a race car feel. It'll go over a series of camelbacks or humps till it gets to the retarding brake. That's where there'll be a significant stop. It'll go and rest in the, the hold brake before it gets back and returns to the station. The whole experience is about three minutes. And this experience is the main attraction of the Ferrari World Complex, the largest indoor entertainment park in the world. The park's theme, speed and Ferrari style. The iconic roof covers 200,000 square meters. And the crowning jewel of the park is the Formula Rossa roller coaster, the fastest ride on earth. Thrill seekers around the world await its official opening, a date that is approaching all too fast. The man in charge of this behemoth task is construction manager Andreas Granik. Andreas is no stranger to roller coaster construction. With over 23 years in the industry, he has built more than 30 roller coasters from the ground up. I've built many roller coasters, but this is the best and the fastest. So we have to make especially sure that everything's in order, that everything's secure and there are no defects on the track. It took a long way to get here. Phase one of construction. Workers have just six months to lay over two kilometers of coaster track in the hot, dusty desert. They must meticulously place and secure each piece. If just one piece is slightly off angle, the rest will not fit together. Months of work go off without a hitch. But at the very last moment, foreman Jacek Gast and his crew face a problem. This piece of track seems to be too long for the place where it should fit. We have to lift the supports so that we can split the track above on both sides a bit. The solution, lift the base of the columns in order to expand the whole track. It's not bad, but it's not good either. It's only a matter of millimeters, but millimeters count when you're moving thousands of tons of steel. The last piece of track is finally hammered into place. As you can hear, the guys are hammering the pins in. When the pins on one side are in, the rest will fit. Nothing can go wrong anymore. All 160 pieces are in place, and the Formula Rossa track in the Abu Dhabi desert is complete. But building the fastest roller coaster is not all about muscle and force. The precision required for the ultimate speed is second to none. Once the structure is complete and all the screws are tightened, we have to go through and check all the joints again. The connections between the track pieces have to be extremely precise. The difference in height between the track sections can't be more than two-tenths of a millimeter. If it's more than that, we have to take the section apart and put it back together again. And if that doesn't work, I have to grind down a whole meter of track so that I am flush at the front. The ultimate speed coaster will go from zero to 240 kilometers per hour in less than five seconds. Any hidden bump in the track connection could damage the wheels and cause serious trouble. In Abu Dhabi, trucks carry huge nitrogen tanks called power packs through the night to the Yaz Island site. With the track complete, 
It is now time to construct the one-of-a-kind power system, which will catapult the roller coaster to Formula One-like speeds. Andreas supervises the unloading of the launch equipment. It is a delicate operation. We've built coaster launch systems before, but nothing on this scale. When offloading these tanks, we have to be extremely careful. Any damage could be fatal. The carriage is very fragile because there are so many components mounted on the tank. Carefully, the power system is secured in the launch building. The next step in assembling the launch mechanism is to attach a 25-ton winch. The winch for the Formula Rossa is the biggest catapult coaster winch in the world. The crane needs to lift it over the building onto its machine base, but this poses a problem. Construction workers have almost finished the roof, and there is only a small opening to lower the winch through. If there had been no roof, we could have set the winch in place with the crane and been done. Normally, everything should be clear to make room for the winch, but unfortunately, that's not the case here. Maintenance director Wayne Meadows is on alert. When you're dealing with 25 tons, it's just kind of hanging there. It's a little, little concerning, yes. <laughs> This gigantic steel cylinder will hold 600 meters of coiled launch cable. The 25-ton winch is lowered into the launch room a centimeter at a time. Because the opening in the roof is so narrow, the winch can only be lowered facing one direction, and that is the wrong one. The challenge right now is just to drop the winch down. You're going to have to disconnect it in order to hook in from the other side of the opening there in order to rotate it around the 90 degrees to set it up on its, on its plate. The winch must be dropped beside its bed plate without damaging it. Wooden beams are placed to avoid metal touching metal. Any dent in the steel could rupture the cable during launch. And one wrong move could end in disaster. The winch is finally on the ground, but the ordeal isn't over yet. The problem is the turning, because here, the steel frame is here inside, so... The team must now turn the 25-ton winch inside the building. We will turn this way. Crane power and manpower work together. Now the crane is taken up. The chain remains in place on one side, and the other chain goes over the cross beam to the other side. It's a delicate operation. The crane must negotiate both the roller coaster track above the building and the roof beam. Many hands are needed to turn the heavy winch and avoid pressure on the roof. This is the whole centerpiece of the ride right here. This is where the launch cable attaches and drives the cars out, it pulls the cars out. And I mean, this is a critical piece of equipment. Without it, we, we don't go, and I don't know what the lead time would be to make another one, but it would be in the matter of months, I'm sure, if not a year. Adding to the risk, the crane driver is operating blind. Everyone is on edge as the winch is slowly eased into position. They've done this before, though, so we're, we're confident with it. They're, they're okay. It's still just a little, little nerve-wracking to see that. After six hours, the moment of truth. biggest and heaviest winch is finally at rest. It works. <laughs> this is a special thing here. You build a roller coaster like this once or twice in a lifetime, if you're lucky. Over the next two months, the rest of the hydraulic nitrogen launch system is constructed. 
This is the biggest machine ever built for such a roller coaster. This is a masterpiece of technology. The heart of the launch system is the winch and a launch cable. The cable is connected to a metal sledge. The coaster train hooks into this sledge. When the coaster is launched, nitrogen is released from the power packs and pushes oil through the engine powering the winch. The winch spins with 21,000 horsepower and catapults the train onto the track, hurling it all the way to the first hill at top speed. There, the train releases from the metal sledge and has enough speed to race through the rest of the course. At least this is the theory. This will come in the Guinness Book of Records. As fastest and smoothest coaster in the world. With the launch system and track in place, the only thing missing is the roller coaster train. From the top of the range, what is their problem? Because you will not have... The train designers discuss a prototype of the Formula Rossa coaster train. Since the coaster will serve a largely Arabic population, there are many cultural considerations that go into the design. We look carefully, um, you know, we know that they wear um, a longer robe or the dish dash, and we look at how they, uh, or sandals, we look at how they step in, or uh, the kind of uh, positions that are comfortable. Yeah, well, we're gonna lower this here. That's why that's smart, yeah. Randy, to make that flat. The car, the, the launching system are both systems that exist. And what we're doing then is we're adding nose, F1 styling to the middle sections, and then, of course, the back wing tail, uh, specific to this actual ride. This is a very fast coaster, and we have to make sure that that's heavily reinforced, a strong structural material by itself. We're really interested in the shape of the car and the speed. So to give that uh, as close to that acceleration that an F1 driver would get. Finally, the trains arrive in Abu Dhabi at the construction site after spending weeks on the road. Andreas is anxious to get the million dollar trains onto his track to see how they fare. His first impression? Everything is in order. The crane carefully unloads each roller coaster car. The Formula Rossa will run with two trains. Each train consists of four connected cars and will carry 16 passengers. It looks good. No damage, nothing broken. Three hours later, one of the two trains is assembled. Since they will ride through unforgiving conditions, these speed vehicles must be extensively maintained. Once a year, the chassis, the boogies, the wheels, everything has to be taken apart in pieces and inspected for safety reasons. To protect the wheels from the extreme heat and speed, Andreas installs a specialized cooling system. We're installing here a water spraying system for the wheels to cool down the wheels because otherwise the coating, the rubber on the rim, could come off. Heat damaged wheels are a big concern and the cooling system is a crucial safety precaution. We still don't know how hot they'll become. We've never driven this fast before. With just over 10 weeks to go before the ride opens, Andreas is under huge pressure to complete the coaster. The next step, testing the trains on the track. It's August, and the temperature has risen to 50 degrees. Yes, I'm sweating. But sweating when it's 35 degrees isn't much different than sweating when it's 50. Before the power system gives the train its first explosive push, Andreas must test how the train responds to the track. He'll do this by pulling it through the entire course with cables and cranes. Andreas climbs 50 meters above the ground to install a steel cable on the track. The air and the track are hot. 
The cable is heavy. The whole operation takes four long hours. Hey. One, two, three. Okay, come on. One, two, three. Okay, don't get loose. Oh yeah. Okay, number one. It is exhausting work. The cable must be fixed and secured every few meters. Finally, the cable is installed. The test can now begin. The cable will be hooked to the Formula Rossa train, and the crane will pull the train a meter at a time. That's how the fastest coaster finds its feet. Stop. Andreas begins in front of the first hill, checking to make sure the train responds to the track as it should. The sensor chassis. We have to watch the whole chassis to make sure it's not scraping or touching anything it should. The whole wheel cluster also has to grip the track precisely. The world's fastest roller coaster begins to crawl before it can run. Everything is going smoothly, but then. Hey, stop, stop, stop! It's only a rope on the gangway. You take the rope off. Fortunately, it doesn't cause any damage. Okay, let's go. Slow. I'm always listening. When the train is pulled along by the crane, there should be no sound at all. But if I hear metal on metal, then I know something's wrong. Or I see something like the chassis bumping somewhere. Everything is good to go, but Andreas needs a third crane to continue pulling the car up the hill. This one is not working. How long you need? The whole day for nothing. I need the crane, otherwise I can't secure the train. I wanted to be up and over the hill already, and it would have been possible with working equipment. It is a full day of lost work. The delay puts even more pressure on Andreas and his team. From this point on, nothing can go wrong. The next day, the crane is in working order. Andreas and his assistant don safety harnesses for another day high above the ground. Now we'll loosen the safety rope and pull the car straight up the hill. You're first on the back side. Today's goal, to get the car over the crest of the 52 meter hill. Hey, this is the journey, it's looking. Hey, be careful here, yeah? While loosening the safety rope in the back, the crane basket comes dangerously close to the expensive train. Granig's co-worker protects the train with his hands. Maintenance director Wayne Meadows arrives to see this extraordinary operation. And this is really a milestone to be able to see a car sitting on top of that 52 meter hill. It's, it's exciting, it really is. Now Andreas fixes the cable in front of the car and checks its position one last time. The cable is the only thing preventing the train from flying back down the hill. Slowly, the car inches its way up. Okay, here we go. This next pull through will get it up and over the crest of the hill. And they have to back secure it to keep it from flying down. So critical in these tests is just checking all the critical 
dimensions and tolerances, making sure the track gauge, which is the whip, is sufficient with the train itself, and make sure all the wheels are rolling and literally not trying to come off the track. What you see here are the baby steps that it takes to get a train of this magnitude, or any train for that matter, into operation. It's a very slow and very deliberate process. You know, and the old adage goes, you have to walk before you can run. God, they're close. <laughs> they really are. I know that they're a lot farther away than what it looks from here on the ground, but my word, that looks close. We have a lot of challenges here at Ferrara World Abu Dhabi. It's an extremely aggressive environment. This is just the sand and the dust, a little bit of hydrocarbons from the approach to the Abu Dhabi airport, and also just the sea air with the saline and salt content that's in there. The train approaches the top of the first hill. Andreas watches every centimeter of its movement. No moving! The grain stayed. The critical pull-through test is stopped while Andreas Granig wraps some ropes around the steel track to keep the train from flying down the other side of the hill. Again, it's just that double and triple and quadruple check to make sure everything is okay. The train approaches the crest. This is the most critical part of the test, and Andreas hopes that his makeshift brakes will hold. Right now, they're just about at the crest, right where the aircraft warning light is, the 52 meters. The train gets speed and... Perfect. ...is stopped. Brilliant. Brilliant. Excellent. So, we go down. The brakes over there and up there are all intact, untouched, no scratches in them, nothing. And the wheel cluster hugs the rails perfectly. Everything runs well. The pull-through takes about four to five days. Fortunately, the hard part's over. The lower the train is on the track, the easier it is to pull it. A few hundred meters away is the actual racetrack that inspired the Formula Rossa, the Formula One Yas Marina circuit. Maintenance director Wayne Meadows and park manager Andy Keeling have a test of their own to conduct. Because of the record-breaking speeds, roller coaster riders will need to wear specialized goggles to protect their eyes from sand, wind and insects. The idea of skydiving because of the rush of air going past your face. And then the hybrid then of the, the more streamlined safety goggles, which then has the elastic band to hold it in place. Mm -hmm. This is a, uh, a fun business, no doubt about that. We're in the business for making people have fun. But with the equipment that we have used in the improper manner or maintained in an improper manner, it can kill people. So my primary job as director of maintenance for Ferrari World is literally just not to kill people. is the only roller coaster in the world that will achieve 240 kph speeds as fast as a formula one race car i turn around just to see if any pressure pulls on them or they try to pull off or anything like that because we know our guests will be doing that an insect going in your eye can really be catastrophic so we certainly don't want that to happen that's why we do these tests the yas marina f1 circuit is the perfect place to test the goggles All right, Tony, thanks for driving. Yeah, we appreciate that. So well, I think we, think we found our glasses. Um, How was it? These are, I think, will work real well. Definitely, they seem to uh, really stay secure at any kind of speed that we were running. I did the side test. From me? Yeah, please, thanks. All right, that'll be good. 
Safety is a big concern, but so is completing the project on time for the grand opening of Ferrari World. Chief Commercial Officer Mohamed Al Mubarak has come to check on the progress of the Ferrari theme park. More than 20 rides and attractions will be featured beneath the red roof. All set to be inaugurated in just two months' time. We do have a tight schedule, but I'm sure with the team on board, we'll get us there. Al Mubarak checks the progress of the park's main attraction, the Formula Rossa. It's all about the experience of Ferrari. What we are trying to achieve here is to give every single person around the world the experience of owning and driving his own Ferrari. And what is way better to do it than on this baby right here. Part of the other safety issues that we have concerning our guests, and particularly in national dress, we have come across um, some coverings and there have been documented accidents around the world, just some in recent years, where scarves, that ladies wear, that. and mm -hmm. uh, condors and all, have actually gotten wrapped around axles and wheels. Wow. Uh, and unfortunately, there's been some deaths. Yeah, exactly. That is neat. And then it's just for ease of putting it on, we have the Velcro, just I the just Velcro strips yeah. that will seal it all the way down. And then to make sure nothing flies when you're going 240 kilometers an hour, you can pull this, pull this in tight. Yeah, of course. And it just keeps everything secure. Can I take this home? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> there are just six weeks left to the Formula Rossa coaster opening. Track and train have been carefully checked. Now it's time to get the power system up and running. 21,000 horsepower. Forces they've never dealt with before. For the first time, the Formula Rossa train is put in launch position. But the launch is now in the hands of software experts. All Andreas can do is wait. His work is done for the moment. Because everything's computer operated, I need these people now in order to finish off the whole project. He's working on it. The roller coaster is controlled by an intricate computer program. Adrian Huguener is in charge of the launch technology. He controls the complicated electrical system. Beside him, hydraulic expert Clemens Scholzen prepares the hydraulic components for the launch test. Everything is ready to go until he discovers a major problem. A leak in one of the nitrogen tanks that powers the coaster. Andreas arrives at the scene. He's the one man who is called to solve every crisis. When there's a leak, we have to take care of it ourselves. If we wait for the nitrogen tank supplier to send someone, it'll be too late. There's a leak in one of the valves. With this huge amount of couplings, that can happen. It shouldn't happen, but it can. And this time a crisis is averted. The leak is sealed before any major damage occurs. We need to make sure everything is perfect before the launch. If we forget something, it's usually too late to fix after we launch. Everything must be 100%. Better to double or triple check everything than check too little. Otherwise, an accident could happen. Finally, the launch team begins the pre-test protocol. The water spray system cools the wheels down. The magnetic brakes are moved up and down. The world's fastest roller coaster is about to be launched. I'm excited. On every project, I'm thrilled when it's finally running. This is a do-or-die moment. The train runs across the launch straight, stops at the hill and rolls back again. Nevertheless, Andreas is relieved. For a first run, that was good. 
The coaster was launched at only 83 kilometers per hour. Even the world's fastest roller coaster has to start slowly. That was at reduced speed, but that was on purpose. Now we can go a little faster the next time, then again a little faster. Then we see how far it can go. Because we wanted to go over the hill, of course, and do a complete run through. That happens now step by step because the hydraulics and the electronics all have to be checked. The electric system alone has over 2,000 possible error indicators. All indicators have to be checked if they react and if they work. The crew runs the reduced speed test over and over again throughout the night. The next morning, Andreas' worst nightmare has come true. The train is stuck in the middle of the track. The train gets one burst of power at the launch, and that one blast has to carry the train through the whole course. There is no drive mechanism in between. I think what happened is that we've installed too many brakes, and the friction from the new wheels slowed the whole thing down. But that's why it's called a startup, right? The brake problem is not a major problem, but it costs the crew valuable time. Andreas must get the train back to the station, but this is not an easy task. The train has no power source of its own. Andreas' solution, sandbags. That's going to be four times 280 kilos. When there's weight inside the car, I'm sure it will move. So I'm going to load it down. And I hope it then makes it back to the station. The plan works. The sandbag power drives the train over the first hill, but it needs to power the train all the way back to the station. Okay, okay. Whoa, yes, it's running to the end. Now we have to do everything else even faster to catch up again. All these challenges and problems ramp up the pressure on Andreas and his crew. The coaster is launched dozens of times over the coming days. It runs the entire track, and the systems are set to reach the ultimate goal. The team makes a final push to set the all-time record of 240 kilometers per hour. And after building and testing every inch of the coaster, Andreas will be its first human rider. Now I have to make last small adjustments. I'm loosening the wheels a bit because the friction is still slowing the car. Wayne makes one last inspection. He can't wait to witness the first manned launch destined to break the record. That's how this coaster's been built from the very start, to have the world's fastest coaster. And now it's time to put the uh, money on the metal, let's say, and uh, get it going. So it's, it's gonna, be, gonna be interesting to watch. We're on the brink of a world record. The number of things that can go wrong with the launch multiply with each increment of speed. Andreas and the guys are walking it now just to make sure we don't have any loose points anywhere. If there was something blocking the metal sledge, a pile of sand or something, that could be fatal. Now it's up to the launch engineers to make it happen. The first human ride at top speed. Yep, I'm up for it now, and I'm ready to roll. The winch is ready to pull the rope. The rope is connected to the metal sledge. The heavy metal sledge is ready to receive the hook. Clear the way. We're launching this at 240 kilometers per hour. We have no clue what's going to happen with the electric system or how the hydraulics or the winch is going to react. 
Einmal noch grinsen, weil jetzt Smile der one last time before the ride warps your face. The man who built the world's fastest thrill ride is the first to risk his life to test it. Construction manager Andreas Grohne and hydraulic expert Clemens Scholzen are the first human passengers on the Formula Rossa coaster. An experience with Formula One-like acceleration, adrenaline rush in the low lines just 1.5 meters above ground, and lots of airtime. It's exciting, it's impressive, but Andreas is only interested in one thing. Did they finally reach their target speed? Adrian, come on, tell us, how fast was it? 240, 15. We've done it, mission completed, we reached our goal, 240.15 kilometers per hour. It's amazing to see it running so well. And that was only the first full speed launch. The opening day has come. Thousands of visitors are approaching Ferrari World on Yaz Island. They have come to discover the thrill of the famous Italian car. They want a blast of speed and feel the rush of an F1 race. The Formula Rossa, the world's fastest coaster, is ready for its public debut. Its construction manager has his fingers crossed. The main thing is, the coaster runs now. We've already lost phones today. No, not allowed, please. Wayne is on hand to ensure all the safety rules are properly observed. Guests in traditional dress must cover their headpiece or remove it so that nothing flies loose and gets entangled in the wheels. Finally, the gates are open for those who crave a major adrenaline rush. Pull your bars back. You need to pull these back. There you go. There's only a seat belt and a lap bar to keep riders in their seats. Keep your head back against the headrest. It's a lot easier. Yeah, set you down. Make sure it's tight. Glasses okay. Make sure they're tight. Safety goggles are mandatory, at least in the first row. Frightening moments, seconds before start. Enjoy the ride. That's a kick. It's an adrenaline rush like no other. A sensational race car feel. An amazing achievement. A true Formula One ride and one that can only be had here at Ferrari World. Once the riders remember to breathe again, few can find any words. Yeah. Wow, just peed my pants, man. I am still alive and I'm gonna go back and do another one. An idea on a drawing board has become reality. For design team manager Brent Ellis, this success is a head-rushing thrill, even more than the ride itself. It was something else. Oh, that was something. That was so exhilarating. That was amazing. Meetings, the design documentation, concept drawings, and you always try and imagine exactly what it's going to feel like when you actually do it. And there's really nothing to describe it, and it is not disappointing. It is truly remarkable. What a great ride. The launches run without intermission. The man in charge, Andreas Granik, can finally relax. 
Sure, I'm happy now that it's done. I'm happy that it works and nothing was damaged and no one got hurt. It's satisfying to see the coaster running. The Formula Rossa races through the heat of Abu Dhabi, the fastest in the world. It is an engineering marvel, a structure that defies both gravity and inertia and offers a thrill like no other.